Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you doing out there today? It's Benny Cuz coming to you from Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Boca Raton Markets. Uh, that's in Florida, if you didn't know. Anyway, um, today I want to talk about uh, something that just got introduced onto the market. It's not a working product. It is a work in progress. And uh, it's another rideshare app in the making and I've said in some other videos where uh, you know I don't like people that are uh, full of crap and the gentleman that's bringing this forward um, I've been watching his videos the last few weeks uh, including today I watched a hour and a half live stream and I, so we all know the story behind Juno we all know the story behind Trip. Uh, we all know the story about Rideshare Austin um, via, which I think via is still working in Chicago, maybe a couple other cities, but it's 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 not a player, right? We all know that in the driving game with passengers, Uber and Lyft are the uh, they're the daddies. Um, these other apps like Juno uh, that was built by a software engineer firm, um, we know that they promised the world to drivers. And it didn't happen uh, as soon as they became valuable enough for their data, um, they sold out to whichever company bought them. Right here, Austin, we know what happened with them. Um, you know, when Uber and Lyft pulled out of Austin, Texas, if you didn't know, it was over fingerprinting. Um, riders and drivers took to Facebook, other social media platforms to arrange rides. And uh, Rideshare Austin was born. And they were doing great until uh, Uber and Lyft came in and, and kind of came back into the city, whatever they worked out, whoever they paid off, whatever it was. Um, and Rideshare Austin kind of got crushed a little bit. Uh, in the past couple of years, I've seen several different um, ride hailing apps kind of come into uh, the viewpoint of drivers, but never any of them get off the ground and have uh, sustainability. So with this guy, uh, Torsten, rideshare professor. Now my story on him is pretty simple, right? Um, a couple of years ago, I kind of stumbled across his videos and there were some things that he was doing at the time that, uh, you know, interest me. And so I started paying attention, started listening. Um, other than a couple of maybe comments made we've never spoken but you know you can tell a lot by the way uh the person carries themselves presents themselves so what what torsten was at that time was trying to get drivers to understand uh that you don't just have to rely on uber lift right that you should be looking for the ancillary businesses kind of like what i was talking about military base everybody around it and getting into business for yourself legitimately getting into business for yourself, creating your own courier company, your own uh, private car service, limo service, whatever, however you want to term it. And then, but I've noticed uh, over the last, oh, I don't know, 20 or so videos, 30 or so videos, um, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, and I hate to say this, but I don't want to say bashing videos, but just negative videos, right? And not enough focus on, you know, uh, promoting that entrepreneurial, uh, you know, business, getting out there for yourself. But then lately, and there's a lot of videos here, there's some really good videos here. Um, I would encourage you to check him out, right here, Professor. Uh, I'll attempt to drop his link down below in the comment section. Uh, but lately, he's been on this thing of uh, creating his own right share platform. And in doing so, creating it based around the driver's needs and the rider's needs, not necessarily the corporate needs. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a little skeptical at this moment. Um, this is a gentleman that says he's created a lot of different businesses and he's had a lot of success. The, uh, the first thing they came up with, you know, uh, like something concrete was this streetteams.com, right? So streetteams.com is a 
driver uh, form. And you can see there's plenty of things here that you can talk about, you know, what's trending. It's a brand new site. And if you're a driver, go ahead, it's free to sign up. But there are different things in here that, uh, you know, different levels that you can come in at. And the first thing I noticed, because that's the first thing I always notice, is uh, they were asking for uh, monetary donations. Um, you can come in at this level or come in at this level or come in at this level. Now, I, I'm really not sure what you get out of these different levels. Uh, you know, something might be a shout out. Something might be, um, did you pick on a live stream, whatnot. Um, so I was a little skeptical there, right? Um, but then yesterday on the 4th of July, let me get here. Pardon me, because there's so many videos going on here. Here it is. This video right here. Uh, Happy Fourth of July. Goat Rideshare Funding Platform is launched. So I worked all day yesterday, as I'm sure most of you guys did too. So I didn't get a chance to really go through this whole video, but I went through snippets uh, on my phone. And again, the first thing I see is they're asking for a donation, asking for a donation. And so today during the live stream, I got a chance to ask the question, well, why? If you've been so successful in all your endeavors, why do you have a goal to raise $25,000? He actually had a good answer. The answer was because of the way that, I guess, he and the board of directors uh, are going to approach this in getting the true funding they need is by crowdfunding or source funding from drivers this initial $25,000 that, that he's looking for. Um, he says that this will go towards, obviously, administrative costs, not salaries, but costs, uh, because you got to build something, right? You got to you got to pay for whatever you need to build it, um, and then uh, some type of legal fund to help defend drivers. I don't know how well that's going to turn out, at least not in the beginning. Um, so between the uh, you know the streetteams.com. Let me get over there. Between the streetteams.com, which is a rider or driver's form, and the other things we got going on here, uh, the crowdfunding for this goat, uh, you know, he's promising a lot. The one thing that has me intrigued is that you kind of, you can come in for $2 at a minimum, help donate, maybe get it going. There's five dollars you get a, a bumper sticker or something. Ten dollars you get a bumper sticker. Uh, Fifty dollars it's for an ambassador, I guess for your city. Um, I guess you'll be a you're gonna pay them to help build them. Don't get me wrong, this isn't a negative thing. I think it's this has legs. I think, um, but there's different levels you can come in at, right? And it obviously it's to raise enough money, and as Torsten says. So that when they hit that mark, uh, that 25K mark, he can then go and take it to um, angel investors and say, hey, look, drivers raise $25,000. Drivers want a better platform. Drivers want to be treated fairly. Uh, and by doing that, and he, I think he's on to something there, um, he can go after the big money that's actually really needed. Um, as drivers, I'm telling you, I talk to drivers every day. Um, I don't really think they understand just how much it costs to run these platforms. Uh, I mean, look, a perfect example is Uber. They lose a billion dollars a quarter. Lyft ain't too goddamn far behind them, and they've got, you know, uh, 50 or 60, 70% less market share. They're both losing money. Um, but that's a different issue. So I guess what I'm trying to come at here is, um, I want you to go and check out uh, the Right Chair Professor. Check out his YouTube channel. Um, if you're happy or uh, maybe you're just a part-time guy just filling gaps, you know, um, then maybe this might not matter to you. But if you're a, a, a full-time driver or somebody who depends on this uh, ride sharing as a source of income, you might want to go check this out. Read through it for yourself. I'm not endorsing it, 
but I'm not knocking it either. I think uh, this might work as long as the uh, board of directors is structured properly and that there's 100% complete transparency. See, with TRIP, which is the one that I guess they're going to launch here August 17th, um, they got a lot of problems, but that's a ride share service where you got to pay to play, right? It's you're going to pay them two hundred and fifty dollars a month, and then you'll keep all the money you 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 know your fares. Uh, problem with that is, uh, what if you don't get any? Like they don't have any they don't have any riders right now. Um, you have a lot of influencers out there. You got a lot of people on social media, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook that say, "Hey, drive," you know, "sign up," blah 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 blah. Listen, we'll let you drive for 10 days free or some craziness, and, and then we'll charge you 250 bucks, right? I ain't giving them people 250 bucks. They ain't showing me nothing. Their app doesn't even work properly, and their app took forever to get out, right? So they, and in my eyes, they kind of went by praying on drivers' uh, need for better and said, hey, well, we're going to take you $250 and we'll get this thing moving later. So there's people all over the country that have, you know, signed up to be an influencer or signed up to uh, to drive for them. And they don't even have a functioning app or their platform doesn't function well, uh, if at all. So I'm not with that one, that multi-level marketing crap. I'm not with that crap. Um, Uber and Lyft, you already know what we got, right? Um, I, I just think that this is something people should go take a look at. You know, read up on it as much as you can. Go to the street teams. Uh, go and listen to Torsten with the uh, with the videos, right? There's some videos here. Um, sometimes he can get a little goofy with his animation, uh, with the way he expresses himself, like the dragon today was just over the top. But nonetheless, I think there's something here. And because I think there's something here, I'm going to deem this as a, as a positive move. Even if they don't get to the level of success that an Uber or Lyft has. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you can only take one ride at a time, right? You can only take one ride at a time. And when that ride ends, your only concern is getting the next ride. So we don't, you know, as, as drivers, I don't care if there's 10,000 drivers on the platform, as long as there's not more uh, supply than demand. And, um, uh, you know, that's something they're going to have to figure out. Anyway, I will be, uh, I'm going to come in cheap at $50 to start with them. I haven't done it yet. Probably do it tomorrow or Sunday. Um, I would just, if you got questions, go check him out right here, Professor. He puts an email in his, after every video, a phone number, and, uh, and we'll see what happens. He'll be here August 17th. Um, I'm hoping to get a chance to meet him. I put it out there to him, um, but we'll see. And if he does come into town, uh, I'll do a follow-up video, maybe go live or whatever, and we'll, uh, we'll get this thing going. All right. Well, that's it for today. Um, I did put out a video the other day about looking for positive topics. Um, I mean, listen, I just turned 30 subscribers. I'm brand new at this. But there were uh, there were a few comments that were dropped in there, and uh, I'm going to do a follow-up video on that because if we, as long as we're not talking about the money, there's a hell of a lot positive about right show. But money's why we do it. Peace out.